Hey, I'm Louise Schofield. I'm a presenter and music reporter, and I'm also a comedy actress for BBC Sesh. Oh, absolutely. It's all rising so fast, and it's so exciting. The music scene across the UK and in Ireland, and do you know what? There's so many incredible artists across the world that I just blow me away. <laughs> There's just, it's just incredible. I mean, I'm so lucky I get to work with these bands and watch them grow. I get to interview them and then I interview them again a couple of years down the line and they've just exploded out of the, the ether. There's so many bands, I could go on forever about all the bands that are just doing incredible things. And oh, I just blooming love it, mate. <laughs> it's a great scene. So I've been creating multimedia and presenting since I was around 18, I'd say. I first went to uni and I am so passionate about music that I just wanted to make a blog and I wanted to write about music. So I created a blog called Unique Lullaby and I made sure I'd go down to so many local gigs and start kind of reporting on um, the gigs that were going on there and getting little interviews. I started getting involved in my community radio station and it really took off from there and I really loved what I was doing. I was starting to get bands in for live sessions and doing interviews and I was also doing kind of like student radio as well. So I was doing all this radio. Um, but I wanted to make things a little bit more visual because that's the world we live in today, isn't it? It's all very visual. So I started a YouTube channel and on that YouTube channel, initially I would upload the interviews I was doing on the radio and just kind of place a photo on the video and then have the audio underneath so like you know early podcast vibes um and then i decided i wanted to do kind of more camera stuff i mean i'm from an acting background and if you've ever met me i am quite animated so uh, you'll know that you won't be too shocked to find that out um but so yeah so i think i wanted to i've always i love entertaining people i think for a start that's something that i love so i thought you know how can I make this channel and make it work? So I am self-taught, like you said, in everything. Um, I bought myself a camera and I made sure I sat down and learned about shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and all that jazz. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm the most experienced of it, but I wanted to know the key things to make a picture look good um, because all I had was a camera and a tripod and I needed to make that work with my style and I was in Cardiff at the time and I was working a lot on the local scene so I was interviewing all the local bands in Cardiff and it was great because the scene there was a great place for me to start because it's so encompassing and community based and you know it, there's so much great music coming out of Wales that I was really lucky to have started my journey there so I was interviewing all these bands and building up this channel basically and it just kept building and building and building um, and then I thought you know what I want to kind of do bands outside of Wales because there were so many bands coming into Wales just playing and touring so I started to interview them and from there I just kind of kept building it building it up and I was finding that you know as I was building all this portfolio of interviewing bands and getting to know the scene and getting to know the music industry a lot more I knew how to approach different bands and kind of my roster was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I was like oh, this is awesome <laughs> this is great this is really you know I wouldn't have pictured that this would happen in the time that I started it because the reason I started writing a blog and doing this music stuff and helping out local music was because I'm so passionate about bands and seeing bands grow and I've always been a music fan and I've always showed up since I was 12 going to gigs I've always showed up for the support band because I'd always check them out first and if it wasn't a fun, then maybe I'd turn up a bit later. But I'd always check them out, and that is the key. <laughs> like working from the bottom and not knowing anybody in the industry, it just motivates you even more because I had no contacts, and I made all those contacts myself. And since making those contacts, people give you opportunities. Like the Zine UK, you give so many opportunities. You know, it's really great to work for all these contacts yourself, and it, it really feels good that you've kind of started from not knowing anybody and being able to contact people so it's it's fantastic we have been in contact for a year how crazy is that i'm actually off to liverpool sound city this weekend to do some press and some interviews and actually i'm also going to be hosting um a stage for bbc horizons who are going to be down there hosting some welsh talent as well so i'm really excited to be doing that on top of all the other press that i'm doing 
Um, that was the first place we met. I was just about to interview the blinders and I met Kathy from the Zine UK and um, from there, it's amazing. Who'd have known that in like a few months time I would have moved to London? Cause I didn't know that. But uh, yeah, so in the next few months, I've got some exciting things planned. I'm gonna be heading to loads of festivals, doing all the press and interviews that I always do for my own YouTube channel and site. Um, I'm also writing some comedy at the moment as well, which is a big passion of mine. I'm a comedy actress for BBC Sesh and I've got the bug of writing. So if you want to see me being a little bit different and a bit more silly, even more silly than I am in my interviews, then you can check it out on BBC Sesh's Facebook page. Um, I'm actually writing a comedy that's a little bit longer at the moment as well. I'm co-writing that with my friend. So um, I'm excited to see how that kind of pans out. Uh, amazingly as well, I've been contacted by a festival that I did press at a couple of years ago and they've been in contact about maybe doing some presenting for their social channels, which is amazing. So watch this space for that. I think sometimes in this industry, you get lost on where you're gonna go to next and the future. And sometimes you need to be in the present and be like, I'm on this journey and be grateful of the journey and enjoy yourself. I think that's something I'm teaching myself to enjoy a bit more. Um, Cause I, as an ambitious person, I'm always gonna look at right, what am I gonna do next and this and this. But then sometimes I stop and I look back and like, you know, this is really cool what you've achieved. I mean, I interviewed Friendly Fires last year and I saw them when I was 16 at Leeds Festival on the main stage and if someone had said to me when I was 16, Louise, in a, you know, in about five years time you're gonna be interviewing them, I would have been like, <laughs> what? I think some of the nightmares, I think self-belief actually is something that I um, do struggle with sometimes and I think Sometimes when you're doing all this stuff, because I always do everything myself, um, or the kind of contacting, emailing, all that stuff, um, it can be quite daunting. And sometimes, you know, you're very upfront when you're a presenter because you are you. And if people don't like you, then they won't like your style. So I think it's always very scary to, you know, understand that you can't please everybody and you are gonna get people that don't like what you do. It's, it's something that you battle with every day and uh, but i do love it and i you know i think at the end of the day those feelings creep into any job and you've just got to keep going with it and i love it and you know the feedback i get from people is so encouraging and lovely and that's always been something that's inspired me to keep going on i think another nightmare as well is money because when you start doing this stuff you i mean you start doing it with nothing you know you, like i've got my camera and my tripod and I'm thinking, oh, how can I earn money out of this? So I had jobs on the side in like retail and bar work and they didn't uh, last very long because I'd try and get time off to go and do presenting or try and, you know, interview something and they'd be like, no, so I'd have to call in sick. But I was sick, I promise. I had to call in sick and stuff to get out of the job, but I was actually sick, obviously. <laughs> I wouldn't lie. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means so much. Um, that is so lovely. I really appreciate that. Um, I think that's something that in my interviews I've always wanted to put across is I want it to be fun and lighthearted and before any interview, if you've ever been interviewed by me, we'll have a chat before. We'll sit down and we'll have a bit of banter, a bit of a chat and we'll talk about, you know, a little bit what I'm going to do and what you're doing. And, and I think it's really important to have your own style and when you're doing this thing because it's a very saturated market. There's a lot of people that go down to festivals just like me with cameras and microphones and you've got to do something that makes you feel a little bit different and I think the style I've built up, I'm, I'm really happy with because that's just me. I think some of my favorite times are when I get contacted by bands that have said, oh, I've watched this interview, this interview, this interview. Um, I'd love you to interview me. And I think it makes me really happy that um, people have watched my content and enjoyed it and enjoyed my style and enjoyed what I do enough for them to want to chat to me so <laughs> it feels really nice. I think as well some of my other favourite times is when I get to interview an, a band again and you build up a friendship and you build up a nice rapport and it's really fun because you kind of become this union where you're watching the band grow but they're watching you grow and you're kind of going up together and I love that because we're all in the same boat and we're all on the same page and I love that we can all collaborate. It's really, I love that when I get to interview bands again and see them do so well, it just makes me so happy. 
so I think if you're looking to get involved in presenting and kind of blogging or vlogging or similar to what I kind of do, you've, I think if you have a niche of where you want to start with it, that is the best thing to do. Because I started with the niche of music and I knew exactly, I actually started with a very niche because I would only do indie and rock music on my blog. Um, and then I started to branch out a little bit more because I love a lot of music. But I think if you niche yourself at first and build that up, you build the platform of yourself and you can break out of that. I mean, I've been doing music since I was 18, presenting that kind of stuff. But you can, if you have a niche, if you have a really, if you're passionate about science, passionate about the environment, technology, anything like that, then run with it. And do some vox pops, go out and take your camera or your microphone out and just do some vox pops and be really geeky and do some vlogs in your room and you can't teach passion. That's one thing you cannot teach. Follow what you love and if you want to do a vlog or start a radio show or a podcast, do the things that you love because you'll sit there and it will just flow out of you so naturally. Like I can ramble on here about <laughs> everything. That's exactly what you can do with your creativity. What I've always learned is if you want to do something, you have to go out and get it yourself. You have to just go and do. I think that's so important because I think the best teacher in the world is yourself. And I've always lived by that. I've taught myself everything from the start and you can only go as far as you want to go. So have faith in yourself because you can do it. You just got to start. <laughs>